There are a lot of different endocrine organs and cells in the body, and we're not going to talk about all of them. I want to focus just on a few that we can talk about in a little bit more detail rather than trying to cover everything. We'll see a lot more endocrine organs and cells as we go through the various body systems individually. When we're talking about the endocrine system, one of the most important things that we have to start with is the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, which are found in the brain. The pituitary gland is often called the master gland of the body because it releases hormones to control a lot of other glands. But it's actually the hypothalamus that's a level up from that because the hypothalamus controls the pituitary. So let's start with the hypothalamus in the brain. This is an area of the brain that detects a lot of different body conditions. It detects temperature, it detects nutrient levels, it detects hydration level, it detects the levels of other hormones, and a lot of other things. Because of that, it's well suited to help regulate all of those different conditions. Most of the hormones released by the hypothalamus are what I call releasing hormones, because their entire job is to stimulate the release of other hormones from the pituitary gland. So we start in the hypothalamus where there are cells that will release a hormone. This hormone goes into capillaries around the hypothalamus that go directly down to the pituitary gland, which is right below it. The pituitary gland has receptors for these releasing hormones, and when the releasing hormones bind to the pituitary gland, it causes the pituitary gland to release hormones. That's why I call them releasing hormones, because they cause the pituitary gland to release hormones. There's special circulation that goes between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. These two structures are very close together in the brain, and there are a lot of capillaries that go directly from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland, which means a lot of the hormones released from the hypothalamus go right to the pituitary gland without having to circulate through the rest of the body. It's more efficient and faster. In addition to the releasing hormones, the hypothalamus makes two other hormones that are important. Those hormones are oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin. These hormones are both made by specialized neurons in the hypothalamus, but then they travel down to the posterior pituitary where they're held and eventually released. These two hormones, oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, are produced in the hypothalamus, but released from the posterior or the back half of the pituitary gland. If we take a closer look at the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland sort of hangs down off the hypothalamus by a stalk called the infundibulum. The pituitary gland has two parts, the anterior part, also known as the adenohypophysis, and the posterior part, also known as the neurohypophysis. These are almost like two separate glands because they release different types of hormones and behave a little differently. The posterior pituitary gland is where we store and eventually release those two hormones that are produced up in the hypothalamus, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. The anterior pituitary gland releases a number of hormones that then control other glands out in the body. The hormones released by the pituitary gland play a special role in things like growth, metabolism, and reproduction. Here we can see a list of the various hormones released by the hypothalamus, including a lot of releasing hormones and our oxytocin and vasopressin, and by the different parts of the pituitary gland. So the oxytocin and vasopressin are stored in and released from the posterior pituitary, and a number of other hormones are released by the anterior pituitary gland. Most of these hormones are responsible for stimulating the release of other hormones. For example, thyroid stimulating hormone released by the pituitary goes to the thyroid gland and stimulates it to release thyroid hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone released by the pituitary goes down to the adrenal glands and causes the release of cortisol. Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are important reproductive hormones that go to the testes and the eggs and help to result in the production of testosterone and estrogen. The two hormones from the pituitary gland that have a more direct effect would be prolactin, which stimulates the production of milk in the mammary glands, and growth hormone, which stimulates, well, growth. 
Here's another figure where we can see that the hormones from the hypothalamus go to the pituitary gland, and then the pituitary gland releases hormones that affect another, a number of other glands. The thyroid gland is an important endocrine gland that affects a lot of things going on in the body. The thyroid gland is often referred to as a butterfly-shaped gland, and it sits right here in the neck, just a little bit below the larynx. The thyroid gland produces the thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, also known as, also known as triiodothyroidine and thyroxine. The main function of these hormones is to increase the metabolic rate. T3 and T4 are monoamines. They're made from a single amino acid. We start with the amino acid tyrosine, and that tyrosine is modified um, including adding some iodines. Iodine is necessary for the production of thyroid hormone. Because they're monoamines, these hormones are polar. There are only slight differences between T3 and T4, but they are important. T4 is more stable, which makes it a better form for transport through the blood, but T3 is more active, so most T4 will be converted to T3 once it gets to the target cells. The release of thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, begins with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus releases thyrotropin releasing hormone, which goes to the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary releases thyroid stimulating hormone, which goes to the thyroid gland. That stimulates the thyroid gland to release T3 and T4. The presence of T3 and T4 in the blood goes to the hypothalamus and the pituitary and stops the release of thyrotropin releasing hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone so that we stop releasing more thyroid hormone. This is a great negative feedback mechanism that helps us maintain a relatively stable level of T3 and T4 in the blood. When the thyroid hormones reach their target cells, the thyroid hormones are actually transported through a thyroid hormone transporter into the inside of the cell. This is unusual for a polar hormone, which would usually bind to a receptor on the outside of the cell. But for thyroid hormone, there's a special transporter that can transport the thyroid hormone into the inside of the cell. Once the thyroid hormone is inside the cell, it binds to its receptor. Thyroid hormone receptors are found in nearly every kind of cell because thyroid hormone affects the activity of nearly every cell in the body. Once the thyroid hormone has bound to the thyroid hormone receptor, it goes to the DNA and it affects the proteins that the cell is making. Once the thyroid hormone binds to its receptor, it has a number of different effects. Now remember that the main goal of thyroid hormone is, is to increase the metabolic rate, to basically make sure that all of our cells are working a little bit faster, that they're using more energy, that they're building more proteins. And so a lot of things are affected by thyroid hormone. We have an increase in overall protein synthesis in the cell, so more proteins are being made. We have an increase in the breakdown of glycogen to release glucose. We have an increase in the breakdown of fats and proteins. These will help provide more ATP for more energy. We see an increase in the heart rate and contraction strength, which means we're able to pump more blood through the body to carry more nutrients to the cells so they can carry out these extra activities. With all of the activities going on, we have an increase in heat production in the body, which can warm the body temperature. We see an increase in things like sodium potassium ATPase pumps that pump the sodium out and the potassium into the cell because those gradients can be used to do work through secondary active transport. So we need to make sure we have those established if we're going to have really busy cells. There are even effects on the lungs, on the nervous system, and on the bones during development. So overall, thyroid hormone affects almost all the activities of almost all of your cells.